Um, good evening again. Uh, item number 14 is uh, the owner's representative services for the Phoenix Center. Um, this it was a request for qualifications that the Department of Public Works has prepared and sent out. Um, uh, it was uh, qualifications were received April 1st, 2019, and there were six respondents to the RFQ. Those were uh, Auk, Hubble Roth and Clark, JMK Consultants, NTH Consultants, Plant Moran Cressa, and Seat Group. Um, after review of the qualifications for this project, um, we found uh, Auk to be the, uh, the best qualified consultant to, uh, to perform the owner's rep services for the city on this project. Um, this work is, uh, um, it's gonna be, it's a large project and we needed somebody who is, um, who has, has done large projects in this vein and, and we knew could handle this kind of work. So, um, Again, we are uh, we do have representatives from AUK here tonight. Um, so again, the Department of Public Works is recommending that a contract be signed with AUK for owner's representative services for the Phoenix Center uh, rehabilitation work. Council uh, President. Yeah. Yes, Attorney Sharp. I just have a question for Mr. Bounds. Um, is it two years or three? Because on the agenda, it's a request for two, but in the resolution, it says it's a request for three years. Yes. I believe in the in the uh, RFP or the, the request for qualifications, we put three years just in case the project took longer. Um, it, again, it's it's a 13 to 16 million dollar project, so um, we've got some deadlines as far as the uh, settlement agreement is concerned. So we just wanted to have uh, make the contract length a little bit longer so that we knew we could get all the closeout services uh, in in within the contract time frame. We wouldn't have to come back for an extension. So my other question is, how does this kind of fall in line with the potential bonding situation with those funds? This so would is be this money coming from the potential, if in fact they decide to do the bonding, would that come from the bonding or is this coming from the general fund? This would be coming from the bonding. This is so, uh, so yeah, no work would begin until we actually know we have funds to proceed with the project. Uh, so so what, what is the severability? Pardon? Severability. What I'm saying to you is, uh, if we do not go out for bonds, right. uh, what is the severability? Because um, uh, we don't want to deal with um, the gentleman from Ock in bad faith, but we also don't want to lock right. ourselves in the bonds that we might not take out. Right. So the the Ock relationship uh, contractual uh, is a is a pay as pay as you go in essence. We we only pay them in the event that we need their services. Um, so. Whether the council goes for bonding or whether the council decides to pay for this out of the general fund or some other fund that I'm unaware of, we have obligations under the settlement agreement to make certain repairs uh, in now 18 months. We're now 18 months away from those repairs. So, uh, you know, based on Mr. Balance's involvement in myself, you know, I, we believe it's critical that this contract be engaged this evening so that we can start taking these steps towards putting together plan designs, et cetera, et cetera, so that we can move the project along. Uh, Attorney Sharp, um, I think we need some language, um, and I don't know what that is, uh, for uh, next week when we vote on this to make sure uh, that, I guess, either we set aside some money to deal with AUK if we do not enter in the contract, and so that can already be clear or whatever um, in the event that we don't take out the bonds. Because uh, let's say uh, there's another way of financing or we sell the Phoenix Center or something else happens in between that time, even though they say it's a pay-as-you-go, they have probably already did some planning and some design work and some other things up until that point for that to go. And so I just want to make sure that we're kind of on the same page because the problem, uh, the conversation that they probably dealt with administration has probably went uh, that we're going to do these bonds and it's going to be X amount of dollars and this is our timeline and this is what we're going to do. And the conversation with the city council has been, you guys want these bonds, you haven't given us a plan. Uh, until we have a plan, we're not issuing any bonds. So those might have been two separate tracks that have been going on and I don't want anybody to get caught in the middle 
uh, and politics take place and we leave the city either liable or put you guys in a bad situation because we do have a good working relationship. So I'm just trying to figure out what we need to do to make sure that everybody's kind of safeguarded uh, if those bonds don't go through. Because I think that uh, there may be a perception that if we lock you guys in for this $400,000, then the bonds are inevitable. And why wouldn't you, if you've already spent uh, $400,000, go ahead and go through the rest of the process. And so I don't want to engage in that discussion with Ock, and we really haven't got anything substantive from uh, the mayor or anybody else on what the plan, design, and feasibility for using that building going forward would be. Well, Council Council Pert oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, I would imagine that regardless of how they get paid, it's just a matter of do you want to engage their services and agree to that payment? Because if that's the case, then, I mean, you, the you would be on the, the hook for that amount, right. period. Don't, you right? the so regardless the of where it's coming sure. from, you would mm -hmm. owe them the $357,987. Right. right. So, I mean, it's just a matter of do you want to engage their services right or now. not? And then the, the financing piece, I would imagine, would come subsequent to that. Yeah. So should we engage the service before the financing? Well, obviously there had to be, in my opinion, a discussion as to what the scope of services are going to <laughs> include. So, I mean, you had to have that discussion. Another planet. Uh, because you wouldn't come up with just arbitrarily 357000 Yes. So that had to have happened. But again, whether or not you want to engage the services is up to the council. So, so if you'll, in the uh, documents that were, that are in your packet tonight, there's actually under section 3.7 is the scope. So basically these, this, these qualifications were based on the scope that we prepared. It starts with, con you know, helping contractor selection, uh, pre-design services, uh, and construction oversight. And all these things that uh, uh, construction, yeah, construction oversight and building commissioning and project closeout. So this would, these their services would take us through the the beginning of the project, getting the physical work done, getting the design done, getting the physical work done, and the project closeout. So this is kind of that's why it's a three-year. We're asking for a three-year contract, as well as uh, you know, but if there's not funding to do any of the work, we wouldn't actually move forward with any of it. So in reviewing that, John, I, I reviewed it yesterday, and it just seems like I, I could be wrong. It's just kind of like the preliminary piece. It doesn't seem like they're going to be too engaged in the actual no, right. restoration. So, so actually, so they would they would be assisting us in, in selecting the, putting out the RFPs for the design services. They would be helping us review those. They're, they're going to be like an extension of the engineering division because the engineering division is two people. Um, so there'll be an extension of the city in managing this project from beginning to end. So, so somewhat like oversight. It's it's not, it's, it's hands-on. That's what I want the council. They're to not physically like doing any of, of, of the oversight. contract of like the. They're not pulling wires for the electrical. Right. They're not doing circuitry. They're when we need them. Sorry. Correct. They're the oversight and the, basically, the, like I said, an extension of the engineering division here. In, in, so, in essence, they're. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So is. Hotel. Clarify. Was it your thought process again that this amount then would come from that bonding piece? It well, it's aside from because it's, it seems like it's just like a work. Yeah, I mean, I I think the plan would be to have it come from the bonding. Certainly, again, we have a settlement agreement that has now 18 Perfect. month time frame. Whether it bonds or we take it out of the general fund, we need these gentlemen or somebody in that role ASAP so we can get this process going. And as, as John said, these are, it's, it's in essence, these are John's eyes and ears on that site on, the, on behalf of the city to make sure that things are done appropriately, make sure things are done correctly. It, Council President, in terms of a plan, the plan is the settlement agreement and we had the IDS report. Those have been provided to Council in terms of what needs to be done, that the IDS report was provided to these gentlemen as part of their RFQ response. So when I hear we Attorney, don't have a plan, I, I guess I- Attorney, Attorney Clark, the IDS report was done on bringing the Phoenix Center up 
to physical code. If we are asking the taxpayers to take out a bond of $19.5 million and there is other additional financing or other things that could make that building a revenue generator, then that is what I consider a, a so let me say it this way. We have a plan. We don't have a vision. What I'm saying to you is for $20 million, I need to be able to sell the citizens a vision of what that building is going to be after they get finished. If you're telling me right now we're going to have a power washed usable building with working elevators and that's it and a parking structure with the same amphitheater, that dog won't hunt. So I'm, I'm trying to ask the city. Uh, we've had charrettes on everything else. Even the guy that wanted the liquor store came with a charrette of what he wanted to do. What I'm saying to you is this $20 million is not really spelled out in a way that shows the bang for the buck or the benefit to the citizens to justify that. I understand that the settlement with the lawsuit required us to do certain things. Some of those things we've already fulfilled. Some of the repairs have not been fulfilled. What I'm saying to you is, are we just going to slap lipstick on the pig or are we going to give her a full makeover? Uh, that's what I'm trying to find out. And we don't have that particular vision. What we have is a report that says that if we just made everything structurally sound, this is what we would have to do in the scope of work. This doesn't say what it takes to make it where we have a concert venue or a dormitory or we move City Hall over to the Phoenix Center. We don't have any of that in that plan. And so if we're going to engage people uh, with the statue of Ark, their building just didn't come with the basic vision. They came with not only an architectural great design, and we don't even have that. We don't even have a display in front of us that says that this is what the Phoenix Center is going to look like when it gets finished. Because guess what? As a city, we haven't decided what that is. We've just decided that we know we owe these people X amount of money, and we have X amount of promises according to the settlement, and now you guys want us to take out a bond when there could be other things that could be done in order to finance that building that we haven't even looked at. So there's two prongs. I know you as a city attorney have to make sure that we do all the legal requirements. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Me as a council person have to make sure that the tax dollars go to something that is usable. That's what I do not have. Your part is done. You guys gave, came up with a settlement. If I agree, disagree, whatever, that's what it is, right? We have to find out what we're going to be looking at because part of that settlement was basically giving them free parking in perpetuity or $25 a slot or whatever it is forever. So in 50 years, what is the Phoenix Center going to look like and how much is it going to cost to make a structure that's going to last for that 50 years? Or are we just making a structure for 10 years that then once our requirements are done, we hope the building deteriorates enough that we can finally actually condemn it and, and bulldoze it and turn that into a water feature? I don't know either one of those things. But I do know if the citizens are going to be paying for the next 30 years, they need to know what the whole plan is and not piecemealed. And what we're getting right now is piecemealing it. And you're bringing uh, people who I respect very deeply and asking them to be project managers, which is great. But if they don't have a project, it's no point in bringing them to the table. Yeah. I might be able to help with this a little bit. Uh, there's two kinds of plans. There's the fiscal and financial plans that we had to work out as a result of the settlement. And then there's the picture of what it looks in terms of a plan. And maybe that's what, the, what, what would help if we had some visual representation of the plan. Now, the picture and description of what is going to be done that is buried in a lot of documents that says what we have to repair and at what time uh, and all the systems. And yes, I'm anxious to see that get started so we can have that amphitheater up there usable again like we used to have. That's the vision that I have. So, but some people need a pictorial representation of that, and maybe we can get that for you. In fact, I'm going to ask Vic and James, would you be willing to get a sketch and drawing of what, uh, what the Phoenix Center 
um, would look like with the repair and the kind of the repairs. Would you be willing to do that for us? Because what they are, what the, we are hiring them to do and asking you to hire them as owner's reps is that that's what they will do. They will hire and they will did RFPs for the architectural designers and for the construction experts to actually come up with the, you know, bolt by bolt what that place is going to look like when it's finished. But, uh, you know, it seems like we're kind of mired in that right now. Is it possible for you to get us a, um, um, you know, technical addition at some point? Not right now. Not, I don't mean right now, but by next next week. I didn't I expect to have it. I didn't expect to pull it out. I, I didn't expect you to pull I, I didn't expect you to pull it out of your back pockets, but I'm thinking if you can maybe take it from there, would you? Because I think we're kind of stuck on what, what kind of what the picture will look like. Okay. Uh, the professional services that we would provide mm -hmm. you were know, described by Attorney Clark that we would be assisting in preparing an RFP say for a design firm now we would need some direction you know, from the city that I guess the, the one phase would be to meet all the code and structural requirements to make that building safe make it accessible but then with the idea of a design firms they are the ones that would provide say the renderings to help deliver the vision. And that would be part of what we would request from their services. So uh, I think you know that would be the proper course. And we could work with, uh, with the Department of Public Works to develop a timeline on when those would be available, you know, so that you could see that it would be a process. But uh, what's being asked to be approved now is just for our staffing costs uh, to support those services and in our proposal, uh, about a third of that would be, say, used to go out and evaluate the building, get the professionals in, get the proposals in for the design professionals, who are the ones that would develop those renderings? Because you wouldn't want to see the renderings that Jim or I would come up with. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. But the, the most important thing is that it would be all very transparent. Uh, we would report on the process. You're working with DPW, you know, as, as we go through that. So, it sounds like some of this would get defined, you know, as the process gets moved forward. I, Turn sharp. I just think that he just kind of clarified. I think the disconnect is right there. I think the disconnect, in, from what I see, is that council is kind of looking for some guidance as to, well, if we do this 19 million dollars, what is that going to get us? Is it just going to put us to a functional state, or is this going to make this? building beautiful and we can potentially generate X amount of dollars. I think that is what they're looking for, if I'm correct, Council President. Yes. Okay. And with that said, uh, for the services that we've presented, uh, and that portion for the pre-construction would be to develop the estimates. So, so working with our consultants that are part of our proposal, you know, to bring the, say, the building to code, you know, we'd be able to estimate those costs. So then again, decisions can be made. So is, is there a way? Yeah. Uh, that we can separate that out and give us that pre-phase first and approve you guys for that contract so we can get that done um, and not do all of the rest of the stuff because uh, locking into this blind faith is what got us into receivership in the first place. We just did a $33 million bond on that building that we're still, that we just paid for. So I'm, yeah. if, well, if you can help. Well, with that, you know, the standard say contracts, the uh, AIA contract forms, okay, we would see it being written for the amount for the staff, say, that was presented there. Uh, and then those contracts provide that, say, we get reimbursed, you know, it was stated on a monthly basis, you know, based on our hours and our rates. So, uh, you know, there is that protection, you know, for the city, you know, as the project moves forward. So, so just to clarify, I think what the council president is asking, just for you to answer, is it possible then, hypothetically, if they went and approved your contract, is it a way where you could do that portion of the your contract first in terms of being able to get the RFP out, to get someone to potentially give them the renderings that they need sooner than later, so then they can make a determination as to how they go forward with financing? I would say with the... Yeah. Just try to go through that just a little bit. The way this was really put together is RFP. We're providing a service um, for pre-construction that's broken out for us. The next step would be really to get a consultant on board for the 
for the deck for, for design, mechanical, electrical. So they can also do a narrative to say, here's all the things. Yes, you do have a report from IDS. You have one from Walker Consultants, but they're just um, big, big pictures of what needs to be. They're not really documents, okay, or something you can estimate. That is really the next step. So I guess what the council, I guess you're asking is uh, your, um, I guess, risk you're going to have in this first development. You're really going to have two people. You're going to have a consultant that you're going to have to hire, an architect, call him an engineer, and you have the auto company. Those are your things we look at pre-construction. In the RFP that we get from the consultant, the architects, it will break it down through all these different phases. So if it came along and you said stop, you know your exposure at that point. And that's why that's how these AIA documents are set up. So you know your exposure. You know it's not the bottom line because, like John said, if it stopped from some place in pre-construction, you don't pay through construction and all these other costs. And these, these are all broken out in the RFP. Oh. Oh, for the other two, you're the good guys. I have no problem with you guys. <laughs> okay, man. I, I think it pronounced eight, but uh, I think that's how you say your last name. But anyway, uh, Mr. Clark. Yes, sir. The problem I'm having is uh, I had no problem with the Delton report at all. The city had a problem to get into involved with a lawsuit because it was a bunch of finagling going on that that uh, these engineers, I mean, as it, from one engineer to another one, John, we, uh, I didn't see any problems with it. It was, it was a damn good report. Now, the trickery got involved in it, and same as the, uh, the Eagle contract. I didn't have a problem with that one. Now, if we can use those for reference, then we, sh then we should have a ballpark figure of, of where we need to be. Whether it's handicap accessible, it was already spelled out. We didn't go that way. And for Mr. Clark, uh, no, I don't like the bond, and, and, and yeah, that's, I'm speaking for, and, uh, for myself. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vote for a bond, period. But, but it was all voted. But... Since we got money that we use for pension funds that we can do, and why the reason I asked you for the actuary, because between you and I, I think actuary, you're supposed to live to be about 70 years old and then you die. If I'm counting real money that, that they got in a pension fund, and we took the excess money to pay the former employees health care, then we got a lot of money we can go ahead and play with, because the reason I asked you for the actuary report, because I want to know how many years you expect all these people to live before they reach Medicaid which is not very far away. In that case, we got millions of dollars to play with. We ought to be able to use that to dissolve the pension fund. If you're going to make 8% or whatever this process says they're going to make 8% forever, then you got a large pot of money and there won't be many people because they'll be on Medicare. And if that's the case, then you got plenty of money to go ahead and put into this Phoenix project without us taking a bond out. Well, uh, sir, what's your question? Yeah, that was my question. Okay. <laughs> that was my question. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't have the actuary. You're talking about the actuary for the GERS? Exactly. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be ready at the end of this month. But I'm just saying, yeah. ideally the actuary is how long you're going to live, and then you die, and then the rest of the money should come back to the city eventually. So in that case, you figure out some expectation that all the four people going to live to be 85, then, then we can count money, real money, that goes back to the city, minus whatever goes out for the health care. But by then, everybody already had, we can factor in Medicaid already, so we know how much money we have, real money we can use. I got to say I'm something. Sorry, okay. I, I just got to say something. I'm sorry. Um, That's all. Colleague, unfortunately, John, you're probably not aware of the only thing is the city can't touch that. Uh, I think Billy knows that out there. We can't touch that. That pension fund money. Over and above, have to go back to the city. Okay. Council President, I, I guess just one point in, in terms of uh, uh, Attorney Sharp's questions. This is a not to exceed contract. Mm -hmm. It's, again, it's a pay as you go. Uh, um, so, I, I, and, and based on these gentlemen's, you know, statements, I, I think that the council could engage the contract so that we can get this process going, these renderings, so that well, council can make an informed decision at some point. Well, all, all of that sounds good, Attorney Clark, but as you guys let me know um, time and time again, anytime there's a loophole in the charter, you guys will find it because um, it's only 32 pages long. Um, so. Once we approve a contract uh, for the mayor to sign, then we don't have any stops or barriers in that contract. The city as a whole, which would in that term be the DPW and the administration, would decide if they wanted to further engage or whatever. I guess from my standpoint, and I, and I, don't, I haven't uh, went back and forth with the RFP, uh, maybe we just allocate a certain amount, maybe it's $100,000 
and then with the understanding of what scopes of work we want first and then exceed it going forward. Uh, because if we engage in this $400,000 worth of scope of work, we don't see it again until you guys have already said, well, we've got these renderings and this is what the bond money is going to do, uh, which will be problematic to me as a council person. So, so uh, what I'm saying is, um, it's really a question for the art company in which uh, what they're willing to engage with along with the mayor and uh, the, the city. Um, because uh, my point of view is if it's a pay-as-you-go contract, then just like a prepaid phone, you pay $50 and then you add on to it. Um, and maybe that's where we should be going with this contract, start them off and give them an amount to bring a staff person on for that first scope of work, if it's 75000 or 80000 for what they need to do, and then as we see the progress, then go from there. I, I know that they would like to kind of probably have something locked in, more concrete, but I think because of where we are as a city um, and where we've been with the Phoenix Center especially, um, it's important that uh, we're probably uh, more uh, hawkish than we've been in the past. So uh, based on those comments, Council President, if we were to come back next week with a, a specific scope of work and an attached not to exceed that would allow this process to get off the ground in terms of renderings, is that, is that what you're looking for? Okay. I'm so, just going to, I'm sorry. All right, so then I'll, I'll we'll work with Mr. Bowen and, and the gentleman from OC. And Hold on. We'll, uh, we'll, but, Sharp to say I was just going to chime in and say I think that that would be probably the solution is if you came up with something that was a little bit more detailed in terms of the scope and the progress. So if you could show them that, you know, you're going to have these renderings by this date, I think that that would help the situation. Okay. I don't want to speak for these gentlemen, so I want to make sure that that's something that if they're agreeable. can accomplish. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're agreeable to uh, say meeting with DPW administration, whoever is appropriate, and then coming up with a, I guess, a scope of work so that you can understand, you know, the timeline for our services, and then what the next steps would be for design, uh, engaging the design professionals that ultimately would lead to renderings. You know, so it will be a step-by-step -step basis. So we would be agreeable to that. All right, thank you. The meeting is adjourned at 820. Uh, okay. I thought all of those were communications, sir. We did that already. You did 15. Number 18. 16. You don't know if you received this. I just want to give an update on something. Okay. Uh, item number 16, uh, did we receive the information from the Sheriff's Department um, from the goal setting?